Good morning. Today I'm doing a 12 hour shift plus call and I'm assigned in endoscopy. My room is going to be doing a lot of ERCPs and a couple of ETDs. Got my drugs to pick up some phenylephrine and and norepi just in case. Most of the time they're either max, which stand for monitored anesthesia care sedation or twilight sealy, whatever you want to call it. Some of them will be general. Endoscopy moves a lot faster than the regular ORs. You can do from maybe 8 to 15 to 20 if you're like private practice cases a day. In the regular OR rooms you're doing maybe 2 to 4. They can last from 5 minutes to an hour typically. First thing I have to do is do a machine check. We'll turn it off. Turn it back on and then assemble all of this. This is the S5 of Watts. You just press start here and then it runs through its little thing and then it'll prompt you once it's finished. In the meantime, attach the bag. This is the bag here. This is the circuit. And then attached to the circuit is the CO2 line, CO2 sampling line. Now we have quick patient Y switch bag vent to bag. Let's see. Boom, done. Then you set the APL valve halfway between 30 and 70. So this is the APL valve. Put it right there. Then you press start. It goes through all these prompts here and tells you if it meets criteria or not. In the meantime, we're going to do an airway setup. So I have my endotracheal tube, 10 cc syringe. Make sure to check the pilot balloon and the cuff. Make sure there are no leaks. Next, we have some tape. Put that there. Gotta grab an oral airway. Uh, I'll take two. To go with an oral airway, you need some tongue depressors. We need a temp probe. Boom. Is that here? What else? I tape. Pre cut out I tape. And uh, that's pretty much it for endo. Usually I'll make a soft bite block, but we're gonna do a lot of EGD, so that just gets in the way. We don't need that. All right, so now it's all nice and pretty. Cover it up, and that's my airway setup. So machine check is all done. And now we move into our drug setup. This is fentanyl. We have propofol for induction. Versed, midazolam, benzodiazepine, and then some ketamine, just in case we need it. We use succinylcholine as our neuromuscle relaxant because the cases are a lot shorter, but you can also use racuronium, which is longer acting, and we reverse it with Sugamidex. We only use 500 cc bags of normal saline, but always make sure to prime your IV fluids. You just watch it go, go, go. And then once it gets to the end, you close it off. Done. I close it off here. Some people will use the roller clamp and close it off. Whatever you wanna do. If you know your room is busy, you can go ahead and set up for all the other cases. Well, IV bags, but make sure to keep them clean. My first case is a 50 year old male coming in for ERCP stent exchange. He's got a pancreatic mass, but otherwise healthy. Should be fairly simple. It's 9.24 and we just finished the first case. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The second one is an EGD diagnostic. And this lady, she's 66 years old, um, 
has has history of cardiac arrest with general anesthesia, so we're gonna avoid that and just do a match. It's 10.44, I finished that case. I ended up giving her a bunch of things. One of her said 75 of fentanyl, 140 of propofol, and had Prestidex running in the background the whole time. She was still moving around quite a bit, so I gave her some ketamine just to level her out, and that seems to do the trick. Sometimes I just use lidocaine and propofol to keep it real simple, but my attending wanted to keep the propofol to a minimum, so I had to use a lot of adjuncts to do that. Typically, for a 30-minute case, I will end up using maybe 500 milligrams of propofol, and in this case, I only used 140. So, other adjuncts work. This patient, he's 72 years old, he's got a biliary stricture due to his colon cancer and we're gonna go in and put in a stent. Um, procedure's called a DRCP. He's going to be a flipped prone and general anesthesia. One ID. Probably going to use propofol, fentanyl, lidocaine for induction and then succinylcholine to intubate. Typically, they don't need much after that, maybe a little Zofran for wake up. That's it. We finished that ERCP. We ended up doing it supine because the patient's neck was like really rigid and limited. We couldn't turn it at all when we went prone. So the proceduralist decided to flip him back over and do the procedure uh, supine. Woke him up, no problems, no complications. It's 13.31 right now. I just got back from lunch. So we're about to do another EGD for a patient who's 39. And he's just got a little bit of reflux. Uh, we're just gonna scope him and see what's going on. All right, new drugs for the next case. Come on, let's see, airway set up. Need a back blade. Gonna go find that. I'm missing a Mac blade, so I gotta go hunt around for it. We're apparently on the shoulder. Found my Mac blade. This airway setup is all good to go. And boom, that's it. All right, my next case is a 38 year old male. And he's coming in for an EGD. He's got pancreatitis and AFib. Other history includes GERD. Um, that's pretty much it. The biggest thing is the necrotizing pancreatitis. We will do a general for him because my attending thinks the GERD is pretty bad. Minimize any risk of aspirating. She had a patient throw up earlier, so now we're on high alert. Okay, it's 4.49 and we just finished the GD. About to do an ERCP. He's got polyolithiasis. No other medical problems, otherwise healthy. Plan is general anesthesia, one IV. Probably use propofol, fentanyl lidocaine and succinylcholine to go to sleep and then give some zofran for antiemetics at the end and that's it. Airway set up. Drugs. 6.30 and we finished the ERCP. Now I'm about to do a EGD and it's going to be under sedation so I gotta grab some propofol. Probably just gonna use propofol and lidocaine this time. Yep, that's it. Last 
case of the day. A little tired, but it's okay. I'm off tomorrow. Great news. I didn't have to start that case. Um, the night person came and got me out. What time is it? It is 7.09. I'm heading home. Woo!